Welcome to the CEO Launch Podcast. We are a dynamic mother-daughter duo bringing you personality, insights, and practical advice from two different generations of entrepreneurship. We aren't just mother and daughter. We are also best friends and business partners. I've watched my mom help thousands of entrepreneurs start the businesses of their dreams, including me. And now it's your turn. Hello, guys, and welcome back to episode 10. And today we are going to talk about recovering from mistakes. Yes. Let me tell you. So when we were planning out this episode, we were trying to figure out like what story we were going to tell with this episode. And I have the perfect story to tell, but it's not really my favorite story to tell. I'd imagine most people don't like talking about mistakes. Yeah, so this one is, this is a really big mistake that I made. And not only did I make this mistake, my daughter actually witnessed this mistake that I made. And so, did I tell you that I'm about to get vulnerable? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for seriously though, people, all they want to share is their wins, right? We talk mm-hmm. about all of the great things that happen on social media, but nobody is really sharing how they lost, right? Yeah. Nobody's sharing negative bank balances or credit card declines Mm -hmm. or bad client reviews or when they messed up. But we thought that this was probably a great time to go ahead and talk about these mistakes because the reality is we all make mistakes. Yep. And the way that we handle those mistakes and the way that we recover from those mistakes make the difference. So, heavy sigh... (sighs) <sighs> Who's dramatic now? I know, right? I feel like I'm Kenya today. Kenya is the drama queen. I am not. But today I feel really dramatic. But nevertheless, let me just tell you what happened. <laughs> right. So it was the pitch of the year. No, I'm just kidding. No, just kidding. Just kidding. But this was this was over a decade ago. I had a potential client reach out and say, hey, I want you, I'm interested in having your company do my accounting. And this time I had, this was with my company, I had employees and I had a real big office and all this other stuff. And so we had a consultation when she came into the office, she wanted us to do her books. But this particular client, she had a different software that she was using. She wasn't using QuickBooks, which is what all of our clients are using. She was using some other software and she wanted us to use the software that she had. So mistake number one, because I was making an exception. Mm -hmm. Um, So just put a pin there. So I make this exception and we take her on as a client, provide her with a list of the things that we need from her, as well as on that list is a deposit to get started on your service. And it was about mid-year, so we're going to be doing some catch-up work and, and there were some things that we need a lot of things that we needed from her to be able to get started. So she was excited. We were excited. And we decided that we want to make this thing happen. Mm. So time goes by. She is very slow on getting us the information that we've asked for. We requested it several times. And she was busy and she was going to get it to us or she trickled it to us. And needless to say, like six weeks passed from the time that she paid her deposit and she, we still didn't have all the information that she submitted. So maybe about week seven, seven or eight, she finally submitted all of the information. Mm-hmm. And so we're eight weeks into this project. We finally have everything that we need. So now we want to get started. Eight weeks is two months. She was already behind on her books. And so we're additional two months behind. So she finally gets her information. And then like week nine, she wants an update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, red flag number two. Right. (laughs) So we're working on it. We're working on it. And then the staff person that was working on her stuff had an accident. And um, the accident had her out for like a week. So, I, you know, I'm trying to juggle my workload and picking up as much of the pieces of her workload as I possibly could Mm -hmm. and wasn't really able to do it. So initially she understood And then after about two or three days later, she was like, she wanted her money back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we're like, really? You know, like we've we've gotten started, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to fast forward because I don't want to tell the real, real long version of this story. So 
we're still working on her stuff. We think that she's, you know, I asked her to please allow us the time to get the work done so we can get it done to her. At least do the stuff that she paid us to do. And then if she wasn't satisfied or whatever, she could take what we did and just kind of go somewhere else. Yeah. So she never responded. So I thought we were good there Mm -hmm. until the sheriff showed up at my office. And I'm like, what? You know? Yeah. So the sheriff shows up and Long story short, she was taking me to small claims court. Wow. For her money. Wow. Yeah. So I go to small claims court. I think I have a leg to stand on. I do a little bit of Google research. And this is for all of you who don't hire professionals and you Google it. I was one of those people, right? So I didn't Mm -hmm. talk to an attorney. I just did my little Google research, showed up in court, presented my case. She presented her case and surprisingly enough the judge sided with her yeah and I I was there I was in court I thought this was just like another little errand that we were gonna run this is gonna be a quick little we're gonna go to court real quick it did not look like law and order I was very confused um (laughs) and when he said that you lost, I was so shook because I was just texting and I don't even know, probably not texting. I don't know if you could bring, but I just wasn't fully paying attention to what the situation was. And to find out that you lost, I just, I didn't know that you could lose. Like, I just (laughs) didn't know that that was possible. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Keep going. Sorry. That yeah. was my little piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's exactly it. Like, I probably gave you the impression that I couldn't lose because I felt that way, too. Yeah. And so, so can I get, can I tell the petty part of the story? You think I should tell the petty part of the story? You know what? Because you've grown from it, that will be the disclaimer. She's grown from this space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So the petty part of the story is once I lost in court and I was I had an attitude and I'm going to come back to how I lost and why. But I had an attitude and I had to pay her her money back. I said, I'm going to pay her in pennies. (laughs) I also remember that part. (laughs) What's worse is as we were reviewing this story, I was like, yeah, that's the girl that you paid in pennies because I didn't follow up on the story. (laughs) I just knew that part, but she did not pay her in pennies. Yeah, so but but let me just tell you, I did go to the bank and get pennies and it was so heavy that I needed like a wheelbarrow <laughs> to roll the pennies. And I was I was going to have one of my family members go deliver the pennies to her. And then I got convicted and said, now that is not, that's not Christ-like. Yeah. That's not mature. That wasn't really even you. It yeah, was just, it, just, it yeah. wasn't me. But yeah, so I ended up taking the pennies back to the bank and I wrote her a check. No, I think I got her cashier's check or something. I don't know. So I did not pay her in pennies, but I did have a petty moment in that. And so let's talk about why did I lose? So I don't know if you laughing at me or what right now, (laughs) but this was over a decade ago. So I am Mm -hmm. definitely not that person. Right. But the reason that I lost is because I did not take the time or the money to invest and have an attorney draft my contract. Mm -hmm. And so there was language that could have been in my contract that would have yielded me a victory. Mm -hmm. But because that language was not in my contract, I lost. Because I Googled and used some little template that I found on social media, I mean, on the internet as my service contract, Yeah, I ended up losing a court case. And so in addition to the labor, because I paid an employee to work on her stuff. Mm -hmm. um, So I lost money there. I lost money because I gave her, I had to give her all of her money back. Mm -hmm. And this court case was during tax season. And so I lost time away Mm -hmm. from clients. Like I should have just paid her her money and said, forget going to court. If I knew I was going to lose, I probably yeah. would have. Yeah. And so I lost time, but I learned, I learned a lot from this lesson. And after that situation, listen to me, honey, I don't care what my attorney charges. Every single contract that I use in my business is drafted by an attorney. Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh, child. So I did it. I got through the story, Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we done switched roles. She, woo, you done became drunk queen. Um, but I think what, what you're saying is really important, especially for 
new business owners because a lot of times we want to legal zoom our way out of everything and we can't you know when you think about what you're actually doing and this is for service based and product based because you might be selling products and you selling shea butter and your shea butter gives somebody some crazy reaction and lo and behold you getting sued because of the skin reaction and you know pain and suffering and all of those things so it's like legal is not something that you want to skimp on when it comes to your business as much as you may think that all the bad stuff is gonna skip you it it might not and you don't always win you do not always win so you want to make sure that you invest in protecting yourself and protecting your brand and protecting your business something else that I learned from the story and I'm still learning in my business is not to be so accommodating yep making those exceptions. Let me just tell you, every time, not most of the time, not some of the time, every time I make an exception in my business, I regret it. Because it was a reason that you made those rules. You right. know, like we so methodical, we are so strategic. There is a reason why we made those rules. And when we let people kind of step us out of those rules, it, it blows up in our face. Even for me, I've had stories where I've made exceptions with all of my services. I try to, unless they are huge ticket items, pay me and I'll get it done. I promise you, I won't shake you. I ain't going to not give you what you asked for, but I like for my clients to pay up front. And in one particular scenario, it was somebody who I made an exception for, for them not to pay me up front. And sure enough, I still have not gotten paid by this person. Still, it's been almost six months and this person has not given me, and it was a little, a little ticket item. It was like $45. Like, I was just like, dang, yeah. you know, but it was that exception. I made that exception and it I'm paying the consequences. It's forty five dollars. I promise you I will live. But <laughs> Yeah, but it's still it's a lesson right that you learn and so the amount of money that you lose in your business in many cases is relative because mm-hmm. even when I think about what I lost in my story in the grand scheme of things, it was less than 1% of my annual income, but right. that doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter because it was something that I lost, but mm-hmm. the lesson, yeah. listen, I could not have paid the lesson that I learned from that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would have ever been able, to, somebody would have been able to drive it home for me yeah. without having that experience. And so... I think it's good. We could jump to our takeaways. Yeah. Um, so my takeaway is sometimes you lose, yeah. but you don't have to stay there, right? So mm-hmm. you acknowledge that you messed up, mm-hmm. learn from it, and then correct it. Do whatever it is that you have to to change. So for me, I had to accept the fact that I lost that me court too. case, right? And I lost in front of my daughter. Yeah. But then I had to learn from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that the learning from it was I recognized that my contract was whack. Right. And so I hired a real attorney, not somebody that plays one on TV, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, to draft up my contracts going forward. Right. I think the lesson for me, especially as a very new business owner, is recognizing that as much as you want clients and even for me personally, I love to be understanding, but there is a limit to it. And so in your business, you make the rules. So you have to stick to the script. If somebody can't follow the rules, if somebody, if it doesn't fit with somebody, the things that you have outlined already, then that's not the somebody that you need to be doing business with, you know? And we've talked about this a lot, you know, setting yourself up so that you don't have to take any and everybody as a client, like not quitting your day job that's right, just right. important that's what we talked about last yeah, week. yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, you know, just making sure that you stick to the script. You wrote the script, stick to it, read it, act it out. And if anybody has a problem with it, then they wasn't meant to be in the play. And that's perfectly fine. You got to move on to the next actor. Yeah. You saw how I went with that analogy. I kept going. I yeah. kept going. Yeah, yeah it was good nice. Job. It was good nice. job. Good job. That was real yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, hey, you already know we always have fun. We hope you did, too. Hope that I didn't get vulnerable for nothing. <laughs> you know, like I didn't show all my, tell all my business for nothing that you really did take something from that that story mm-hmm. and learn from it. I would also just like to know that for my mama, a.k.a. BB, a.k.a. Queen B, a vulnerability is telling a story about her losing. Most people would have been like, I'm over here sobbing on the um, show and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but BB just don't operate like that. But this was very hard for her, y'all. So, you know, 
please accept it and and learn from the story. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, guys, meet us here next week. We are going to talk about overcoming self-doubt. And if you haven't already, join our online community. The Efficient CEO Movement on Facebook is where we will continue the conversation and provide you with tips, advice, and encouragement. And follow us on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of that. We here for you. Engage with us. Tell us what you like. Tell us some stuff that you want to hear. We got some episodes. Suggestions, uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody wanted to hear about if you have followed us over the years, you know that when I went to school, I got a bunch of scholarships and I was able to pay most of my tuition, room and board, cost of attendance, that's what it's called. I've been out of school for a minute, but cost of attendance based on scholarships. So we, we, we have an episode coming up about that. And if you have any other suggestions on things that you want to hear from us, please let us know. Social media is the perfect place. Yep. So we'll see you guys next week. And don't forget to take off. This is a Claire Wood production.